Hi, this is Debbie from Lime Dude Design and I'm delighted to be a guest for W Plus 9 today. I'm going to be creating a watercolour shaker card using the Kind Soul set. As soon as I saw the Kind Soul set, I knew I wanted to use it as I love the delicate anemones and petunias which have been collected into a beautiful arrangement for me. The set comes with a die, but I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to be white heat embossing the image on watercolour card. So I have my piece of card in the misty and I'm treating the card with EK Success powder tool. This will help to prevent the embossing powder sticking where you don't want it to. Then I'm stamping the image in a sticky embossing ink. I stamped it several times to ensure I got a good impression on the textured watercolour card. You really can't see the embossing ink in the video, but once you sprinkle on embossing powder, it adheres to the sticky ink and the image appears. I gave it a good tap on the back to remove any excess embossing powder and then I brought it to my heat tool to melt the powder. I'm going to be jumping straight into the painting now. The embossed lines make it easy to watercolour an image as the raised lines create little wells to contain the paint. If I'd stamped this in a normal ink, I would have to have painted areas which didn't touch each other and then wait for them to dry before painting the area next to it. However, with the embossed lines creating barriers between each area, I can freely paint in any order which suits. As I'm painting, I'm experimenting with two techniques. Firstly, I applied paint directly to the card and then drew the colour over the rest of the area I was painting with a damp paintbrush. This creates deep shadows and areas of lighter colour. Secondly, I used the wet on wet technique by applying a wash of water over the area to be painted and then dropping in the paint into the shadow areas and letting the water do the work in slowly spreading the paint through the water. Both techniques create lovely results with areas of deeper colour in the shadows and lighter colour where light might be hitting the leaves and petals. However, I did find for the larger areas of the petals, I preferred the wet on wet technique. I'm mainly using Daniel Smith watercolours and two new colours which, since I bought them recently, I seem to be using on every card I paint, are Undersea Green, which I use for the leaves, and Rose of Ultramarine on the petals of the anemones. For the petunias, I've mixed up a muted peach orange shade and using this very dilutely to give just a hint of colour. I find that outlining an image with a neutral tone helps the colours to pop and so I'm using a very dilute sepia around the edges of the image and then softening the edges with a wash of water. I've used my heat tool to dry off the first layer of colour and now I'm adding a second layer of colour using deeper tones to add more dimension by darkening the shadows. Again, I'm using a damp brush to soften the edges so I don't get any harsh lines. For the centre of the anemones, I used a concentrated sepia and then added some yellow to one side to give variation. By this point, I felt I'd been concentrating on the flowers and that the leaves were looking a little flat so with yellow on my brush, I added some to the leaves and then also added a mix of some blue-grey too for variation. When I first decided to use the Kind Soul set, I realised that there was already a stunning range of examples by Dawn and the design team. However, I didn't spot a shaker card, so that's what I decided to do with this watercolour piece. I've used a circle die to cut an opening in a piece of grey card and then checking that the flowers will show through nicely. I didn't want to hide all the beautiful blooms though, so I decided to bring some of them onto the front of the card. I white heat embossed the Kind Soul image again, and although this, there is a die which could cut the flowers out, I decided I wanted to cut out just one or two areas of the image, and so I used my scissors to trim them out. I watercoloured the flowers as before, and then put them to one side to dry, while I worked on the shaker element to the card. I'm going to be heat embossing part of the sentiment on the acetate over the front of the shaker and so I'm using heat resistant acetate from hot off the press. Although you can barely see it in the video, I've placed a piece of acetate in the misty and then using the elements of the card to work out where I want to stamp the sentiment. I'm going to use the hello from the hand letter to hello set and having lined everything up, I'm thoroughly treating the acetate with powder tool to prevent embossing powder sticking where I don't want it to. I'm using embossing ink and then pressing down firmly on the acetate. Usually, as in this case, when you lift the stamp, the acetate sticks to it and so I'm not going to stamp the sentiment a second time on this occasion, as I'd have to be totally confident I got the acetate back in the misty in exactly the right spot. Having said that, acetate takes the ink really well, and once I sprinkled on the embossing powder, I can see that I've got a good impression first time. I've made sure my heat tool is really hot before bringing it to the acetate, and this way the powder melts quickly and there is minimal warping. To clean up the acetate of any spare EK Success powder tool, I give it a good rub over with a microfiber cloth. Now the shaker card is starting to take shape and it's time to construct the shaker element. I'm using a glue roller to add adhesive to the back of the grey panel and then lining up and adhering the piece over the acetate. 
You can see I've got a mark on the grey piece, presumably from when I was testing out the flowers, which would go on that area. But that's okay, because once everything is attached, the flowers will cover the mark. I've cut a skinny strip of foam adhesive and removed the back from it so that the foam is flexible and will bend around the curve of the shaker opening. Once I've added one layer of foam adhesive, I will add a second layer, and this will ensure that there's enough depth to the shaker to allow the sequins and such to move and shake about. I've chosen some sequins which tone with the watercolour, and then sprinkling those on top of the watercolour piece. I prefer to add my sequins to this piece and then align the shaker element on top, so that I can ensure I have the flowers showing nicely through the window. I'm adding the flowers to the front of the shaker with foam adhesive for more dimension. And now I want to add a second part to the sentiment which accompanies the heat embossed hello on the window of the shaker. I've got a piece of dark grey card in the misty and again treating it with powder tool before stamping the sentiment with a hand lettered hello set in clear embossing ink, sprinkling with white embossing powder and heat setting before trimming into a skinny banner. I've added the banner to the card with more foam adhesive and using a T-square ruler to make sure I've aligned it straight. I decided I wanted to bring the sequins onto the front of the card as well and so I've arranged a few around the flowers and then I did those with Ranger Multimedia Matte. Finally I added plenty of glue runner on the back of the shaker panel and I did it to a side holding white card base. And that completes this watercolour shaker card using the beautiful Kind Soul set and if the lovely flowers weren't enough I do think a shaker card really hits the wow factor. You'll find a link in the YouTube description below to the coordinating blog post over at the W Plus 9 blog where you'll find details of all the supplies I used today. If you want to find me, I blog over at limedudadesign.com. I want to thank you for joining me today and to WPlus9 for having me as their guest. Music